O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness remains from one generation to another. You established the earth, and it abides. By your decree, these continue to this day, for all things are your servants. If my delight had not been in your law, I should have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your commandments, because by them you give me life. I am yours. Oh, that you would save me, for I study your commandments. Though the wicked lie and wait for me to destroy me, I will apply my mind to your decrees. I see that all things come to an end, but your commandment has no bounds. Today we remember Dietrich Bonhoeffer, pastor and theologian. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was born at Breslau, Germany, now Roklaw, Poland, on February 4th, 1906. He studied theology at the universities of Berlin and Tübingen. His doctoral thesis was published in 1930 as Communio Sanctorum. Still canonically too young to be ordained at the age of 24, he undertook postdoctoral study and teaching at Union Theological Seminary in New York City. From the first days of the Nazi accession to power in 1933, Bonhoeffer was involved in protests against the regime. From 1933 to 1935, he was the pastor of two small congregations in London but nonetheless was a leading spokesman for the Confessing Church, the center of Protestant resistance to the Nazis. In 1935, Bonhoeffer was appointed to organize and head a new seminary for the Confessing Church at Finkenwald. He described the community in his work, Life Together. He later wrote The Cost of Discipleship, which quickly became a modern classic. Bonhoeffer was acutely aware of the difficulties of life in community and the easy disillusionment that could come when the experience did not live up to the imagined idea. Yet he also wrote eloquently of the gift and privilege of Christian community. It is not simply to be taken for granted that the Christian has the privilege of living among other Christians. Jesus Christ lived in the midst of his enemies. At the end, all of his disciples deserted him. On the cross, he was utterly alone, surrounded by evildoers and mockers. For this cause he had come, to bring peace to the enemies of God. So the Christian, too, belongs not in the seclusion of a cloistered life, but in the thick of foes. There is his commission, his work. So between the death of Christ and the last day, it is only by a gracious anticipation of the things that Christians are privileged to live in visible fellowship with other Christians. He also wrote, I discovered later, and I am still discovering, right up to this moment, that it is only by living completely in this world that one learns to have faith. By this worldliness, I mean living unreservedly in life's duties, problems, successes, and failures. In so doing, we throw ourselves completely into the arms of God taking seriously not our own sufferings, but those of God in the world. That, I think, is faith. Bonhoeffer became increasingly involved in the political struggle after 1939, when he was introduced to a group seeking Hitler's overthrow. Bonhoeffer considered refuge in the United States, but he returned to Germany where he was able to continue his resistance. 
Bonhoeffer was arrested April 5, 1943, and imprisoned in Berlin. After an attempt on Hitler's life failed on July 20, 1944, documents were discovered linking Bonhoeffer to the conspiracy. He was taken to Buchenwald concentration camp, then to Schoenberg prison. On Sunday, April 8, 1945, just as he concluded a service in a school building in Schoenberg, two men came in with the chilling summons, Prisoner Bonhoeffer, come with us. He said to another prisoner, This is the end. For me, the beginning of life. Bonhoeffer was hanged the next day, April 9th, at Flossenburg Prison. There is in Bonhoeffer's life a remarkable unity of faith, prayer, writing, and action. The pacifist theologian came to accept the guilt of plotting the death of Hitler because he was convinced that not to do so would be a greater evil. Discipleship was to be had only at great cost. Let us pray. Embolden our lives, O Lord, and inspire our faiths, that we, following the example of your servant Dietrich Bonhoeffer, might embrace your call with undivided hearts, through Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.